Hey everyone, and welcome to Satisfactory News. My name is Mason, and in this video we'll be talking about some of the things that you need to know when you first start your game of Satisfactory. These are things I've seen new players miss or be confused by. In some cases, the game just doesn't tell you about certain mechanics. So that's what this video is for, so you can start your first game of Satisfactory knowing what you need to know to have a strong start. If you find this video helpful, let me know by leaving a like and a comment telling me which tips helped you the most. Number 1. Connecting Power Power in Satisfactory has to be physically connected with power lines, which means power won't transmit just because you have a power pole nearby. Every machine must be connected to a power pole, which must be connected to a source of power, all with power lines, aka cable. What you may not realize at first, however, is that each of your power producing machines must be connected through power lines and power poles to each other to add to your total available power. Essentially, they have to all be on the same network. For example, if you have two biomass burners, you should put a power pole next to them, connect them both to this pole, then run your main power line off of that pole. Now, when you interact with the pole, you'll be able to see the total power capacity of both biomass burners combined. Number 2. Alternate Build Modes Satisfactory has different build modes for different objects. With an object selected with the build tool, you can press R to cycle through build modes. The most useful one that you'll see is called Zoop. This mode lets you place up to 10 of a single item in a line and is used mostly for things like concrete floors and walls. With pipes, you can cycle between several different modes. This is actually great because modes like Noodle can let you place a pipe in a location that you normally could not when building in the default mode. These additional build modes speed up the building process for large bases and can help place objects exactly how you need them or want them to look. Number 3. Hostile Creatures You will encounter different kinds of hostile creatures in your gameplay, and there are a few important things to note about them. Firstly, creatures spawn in specific spawn points, and if you kill them, they will eventually respawn in the same location. However, you can prevent this from happening. Creatures hate machinery, so if you build any sort of production near a creature spawn, they will stop spawning there. This also means that hostile creatures won't enter your base, although you can't stop the bean from glitching through your walls. Base defense is not part of Satisfactory, so you never have to worry about hostile creatures inside your factories, only when you're out exploring the wilderness. Number 4. The World Grid You can place platforms and machines pretty much anywhere and at any angle but there is actually an invisible world grid that you can build on. When you're placing a concrete platform, hold the control key and you will see it snap to the grid. Do this anywhere else in the world and it will snap to the same grid. You can use your scroll wheel to rotate the platform 45 degrees as well. Using the world grid is the key to having an organized base across your entire world if that's something that you want. You can build with even more precision though. When you place a platform, you can place another one on top of it. Holding control and rotating your scroll wheel while placing it will allow you to adjust the rotation at predetermined intervals. Using this precise rotation, you can make some really cool spiral designs, including rounded buildings. Number 5. The MAM It's easy to get so focused on the main space elevator progression in the game that you forget about some of the other ways to unlock new items. The MAM is an excellent tool for unlocking useful items that aren't necessarily essential to the progress of the game, but will help make your playthrough much more enjoyable. The MAM just takes materials that you'll find and unlock throughout the game to give you more useful tools. It can also scan hard drives you find out in the wild, which contain alternate recipes that can be used in your factory. It's a really useful way to get more stuff, but it's easy to forget about it when you're going through the main progression. It's really hard to understate the usefulness of something like Blade Runners that can only be unlocked in the MAM. Number 6. The Health Bar Chances are, between hostile creatures, poison gas, and fall damage, you might end up dying a lot. If you do, you won't permanently lose any of the resources and tools in your inventory. These items will go into a storage box that appears where you died, and it will be marked on your HUD. You'll respawn back in the hub with no items, but you can avoid death with a bit of knowledge of the health bar. No matter how low you get, as long as you're not dead, your health will slowly regenerate back up to 3 bars. You can manually recharge your health by eating food. Barrel nuts heal the least, followed by pale berries in the middle, and then bacon agaric heals the most. Player-built items like the medicinal inhaler can heal you up all the way instantly. 
if you're running around in the world, you should try to stay at full health. Because if you fall from any height at full health, you won't die, but you'll be left with less than one bar of health. Number 7. Be ready to rebuild. Satisfactory is a game of unlocking more advanced items and discovering new resources. You will quickly outgrow your starting base and need to tear it all down and start over. Don't feel bad about this, and don't try to avoid it. You should always be improving and getting more efficient. A great example is adjusting the buildings and production lines when you unlock faster belts. You can reclaim some materials and speed up your overall production by doing this. Always be improving, and don't be afraid to tear down what you've already built. Number 8. Save often. Anything can happen in Satisfactory, whether it's an untimely death by accidentally falling, or the game randomly crashing because, you know, early access. Either way, the last thing you want to do is lose your last 20 minutes of progress. You should try to manually save often, but it's easy to let hours pass without noticing in this game. That's why the autosave feature is so great. It can save your game regularly at any interval you decide. I'd recommend setting your autosave to go off every 5 minutes even, so that you can be sure you don't waste your time in case of a crash. The game only keeps the last couple of autosaves that happened, so you don't need to worry about storage space. Near the beginning of the game, these autosaves will happen smoothly in the background, but later on when you've built more in the world, the save could freeze your game for a moment, sometimes a very long moment. Luckily, there is a countdown timer to give you warning, so pay attention to this in case your game saves while you're leaping off of a glyph. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed these tips and that they help you. If you're a newcomer to Satisfactory, it can definitely get confusing, so leave a comment if there was anything here that you'd learned for the first time. And let me know in the comments what other guides you would find helpful. Maybe some tips about the middle game, or maybe about exploration, splitting conveyor belts, anything. Just let me know in the comments and we'll think about making it.